dominated the season throughout, is on the brink of taking the title. If he can finish ahead of James Kelly, the title is his. There are other permutations, but uh, he is on the brink of the title. So it's round 18 of the Ginetta Juniors, and Not Paul O'Neill and Richard John Neal are watching. Thank you very much, Steve. You actually need a PhD in statistics and mathematical analysis to uh, come through the drop score scenario in the championship. We have it every year at this time of year. We go into a little bit of a panic. And I've got a sheet, to, bless her, a roof from Janetta's given us a sheet of all the different permutations that can happen. And uh, it, it's interesting. It? Essentially, what we're looking at is, is the gap between James Kellett and that man there who, who's got our onboard camera. Jack Mitchell, of course, dominated the opening part of the be part of the season. Um, essentially, basically, what what's happening is, at the moment, if we don't count drop scores, there's 87 points between the pair of them, but there is only 74 points available for Brands Hatch after this race for the two races. So if Jack Mitchell doesn't race for Brands, he could sew it up. Here's the grid. James Kelly is on pole position. Dan Seelos alongside. Then Jack Mitchell and Ben Pearson on row two. Johnny Hadfield. Now qualifying his uh, older brother Ryan for the first time on row three. Then it's Lando Norris and Jamie Chadwick, Alex Sedgwick and Senna Proctor row five. Senna fastest in race one, incidentally. Matt Chapman and Lewis Brown, who had a top ten result in race one on row six. Row seven, Jack Rawls and Billy Munger. Flash Finneran is next with Benjamin Wallace. Then it's Harry Mailer and Esme Hawking. Jamie Caroline with a 10 place penalty for shenanigans in race number one. Starts at the back, so we can expect a charge from the young Caroline. <laughs> he will, he'll be alright. He'll be good as gold. Sound as a pound, he'll be. So, uh, yeah, who's interested? Then there is Jamie Caroline in the Coco 5 car, number 38, and he's got a fair bit of work to do. He's known as a, as a forceful carter, third generation driver. And uh, he's got a, a fair amount to do. Championship wise, as I say, with the situation with Jack Mitchell, um, J.H.R. was telling me, his team was telling me that if he won both races this weekend, he won one. If they won both, they put, he would start the championship, but they put him out in Super Cup at Brands Hatch, which is interesting. He now said it on live TV. They've got to do it, haven't they? He said it's a verbal contract. Of course they've got to. I've got to pay for it, though, as I've said it. I think you're going to have to find a few quid, <laughs> Captain, to sort of that. But I wonder what was going through his mind coming up to that grid. He can do it, though, as you say, with the permutations. Let's see what goes on. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it, for a youngster to have to do with that sort of pressure. Uh, with no pit to car radio, it's very difficult. It's okay to say, yeah, let's do this, get out these places, you win, but let's see what goes on. Well, I've got my points written down beside me, so we'll try and keep, keep track of it through the race. The lights are on here for the team of the challenge. Lights out, and away we go. Looks like a good start. Jamie Caroline, look at that. He just wants to get past those boys straight away with that penalty. And it's Dan Zilos, but he's there at the front of the pack. Ben Pearson has come through into second. The Devon based driver looking up the inside. So Pearson there in the R and J team. Ryan and Johnny Hatfield's team. And Pearson's got the lead. Pearson's past Zilos. And he's in. This could be a last moment. Proctor is only a lousy meet in contact. Bang! In goes Matt Chapman. Several other cars spinning as well, including Esme Hawking 31, who I think would have been uncited there. Brian Hackfield in the yellow car is there as well. Ben Wallace in his second race meeting was involved. That, that's surely got to be a safety car, do you reckon? Yeah, it's got to be. You can see the marshals in the back of the picture there going straight to the end of the drivers. They're probably not uh, getting going again as they come through Brooklyn. That's just assume that we're going to keep racing. You see Jack Rawls in the background there, he's running the touch wide. But yeah, everybody seems to uh, have gathered all the thoughts up and they've got going again. Bit of a shame that. That was just one of those things. A shot for that. He picked up that. Championship. Kelly, remember, needs to take 13 points. So third place is 26, 
Four places, 22, so Switch, he's only going to take two points out of out of the championship leader, Jack Mitchell. Yeah, it looks like we've got away with all that. It doesn't look like it's going to be a safety car. The cars look like they've been out of the way. Oh, oh Jamie. Yeah. Only been race one. That's a shame. They're both Jamie and Chart cars. I think Sedgwick as well. well. Yeah, that is a shame, isn't it? Dan Timos challenging for the lead. Ben Pearson out front. Look at him jockeying for position. Look at Kelly having a look around the outside. I thought it was going to be a big majestic sweep. It was a majestic move. Yeah, but he didn't get around the outside. Inside now, yeah, outside as they come down into that field. Yeah, that was, we'll see what Kelly's trying to do now, look at the slingshot that he has coming out of the field. But now we've got the, the carnage that happened on the first lap. You see, oh, it was a bit of a tap there, wasn't it, from Jamie in the back of Jamie, who hit... Oh, that was, that was, uh, that was not... Oh, look at the field coming in, Hanfield, and then yeah. he's got the 31 there, and Esme Hawke, he was on sight. Kelly's through to third, sorry, Paul, to cut across you. Oh yes, so he's up to third. Good man, he's made the move stick, hasn't he? And now, now you've got Jack Mitchell's coming back. No, he's, he's done it. It's a clean pass. Not bad. And now we're on board with Jack Mitchell. What's he thinking? What is he thinking? Down into third gear. You can see that look at his eyes. Steely, steely eyed now as we come into Wellington straight. Full throttle up into fourth. Big pull on the stick there. Sequential gearboxes in these cars. Full throttle still up again into fifth. He wants to be in the toe of that championship rival in front, which is Kelly. Look at those eyes. He means business. And now watch his eyes get bigger as he's going down the box. He's got someone on the right hand side of him as he gets Lando, doesn't it? It's Lando Norris, the world karting champion, the youngest ever world karting champion, won at SA in France last weekend, but he's still there in fourth place at the moment, losing top points. Here comes Lando, and this is Kelly's teammates. It's going to be very important for Lando to get in front of Mitchell. But my calculations, Mitchell in position at the moment will, will take the championship, provided if he doesn't race him there, if he races at France. He opens himself up for judicials and penalty points, which could reverse the championship. That's why we have the uncertainty. Won't be crowned champion until that race is started, but he's not in it. Exactly that, and that's a, that's a big ask, isn't it? But we've still got a lot of money to go in our race that we're watching out. They've all been bunched up there, haven't they? Uh -huh. We've got Pearson's not very quick out of cops, and now we've got three or four cars all swarming around him. Like a hot summer's day around the bottle of uh, sugary drink. Good man. Look at that, that's good work. Lando's lining these guys up. And Zelos has made a mistake. And Kellett's no. Kellett's through. Kellett's through. Is he going to hit the shoulder in? Yes, he is. He's been listening to my comms from race one. I think he has now. The question is, did Jack Mitchell go through? Lando's coming through on the outside line. Three wide momentarily. They sort themselves out. And it's Ben Pearson still out front. Look oh. how much longer. Kellett's having a look down the inside. Thought they were going to touch them, but Kelly's going to be very, very mindful of that. It's Mitchell, it's Lando third. Mitchell's missed the gear, or he's, he's been using fourth gear going through that left hander. I did notice that. It's a bit of a high gear for that corner. He's back into third now for Love Field. I think he's had a bit of a problem with the shift there on the gearbox, and he's not pulled in correctly or something. I can hear his revs really low on the track FX that we have coming through our ears, so something's not gone right there. You don't make it look that easy on Jack Mitchell. But maybe he's just letting go, let's just run the race, he's got a gap behind him. Let's see what happens. Well, Lando's the man on the charge, and look at that dust being kicked up by these youngsters. Great stuff again. Big gear at Cox, big gear at Cox, that's big speed. Second to fifth places, Paul, is ten point difference. <laughs> so, can it happen? Lando's coming through around the outside, Ben Pearson on the inside. The Devon man is going to go senior racing next year. Lando gets forced off the road. Ben Pearson's back.